Welcome to The Cynical Developer, the podcast that helps you to improve your development knowledge and career through explaining the latest and greatest in development technology and providing you with what you need to succeed as a developer. In this episode, we're going to discuss teamwork and how to work effectively as a team. Because being a developer, you need to be able to work both on your own and within a team. Sometimes that means getting the team to work better together. So the points that we're going to cover are define what success looks like for the team, work out how to get there and decide who is doing what, do not complain, celebrate great teamwork, team cohesion, and no man is an island. So you should define what success looks like for the team. Every team should be working together to achieve success. Sadly, what success looks like is not always clear. Some members of the team may struggle with comprehending what the end goal is, while others may have conflicting views over what makes the project a success. So for a team to be successful, you need a clearly defined and agreed upon definition of what success will be. Clarity of the goalposts will serve to move every member in the right direction and keep them focused on that golden egg that you're aiming for. Working out what that strategy is and how it's executed is also a team effort. You know, get everyone involved, get them to sort it out, get them to work out how to get there and decide who is doing what. Working out the strategy can be something that you could do on your own or it could be something that you can work on as a team, make it a team effort and get everyone involved to work out how to get there and decide who's doing what. You should make sure you know every team member's skills and flaws, know their values, their beliefs and understand how they work best and which bits you know they're not so good at. Know their strengths and weaknesses. So if you followed my advice so far, You've already agreed a clear definition of what success is with the team. And now's the time to work out exactly the strategy that you will, together, use to conquer this challenge and do it in the most successful and effective way to get to that ultimate goal. Because when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So when you fail to know your team members and how they work together, you fail yourself and you will inevitably fail at achieving success without knowing a team member's drives and passions and talents and flaws you can't ensure that every member is chasing the goal in the best way and you won't be getting the most out of that person because you don't know what they're good at and what they're bad at you know play to their strengths make sure that person is doing the most that they can for you so you have no option but to choose a strategy and to use it with the team You may not be the team leader or the senior developer, but stand up and be counted. Why not? Explain how you think the team should approach the current problem. Give reasons why you think the way that you do. Explain why you think Sam will be the best front-end developer because she enjoys battling JavaScript demons and that Eric needs to be on the business logic because his attention to detail coupled with his sector knowledge, it makes him better than anyone else on the team. This will also show the team that you're paying attention and on an individual basis, those team members are going to appreciate that you're applying worth to them as a developer and as a person in the team as well. And working out how best to defeat the dragon before you, don't forget that other teams are there to help you. Bring in other developer teams. Bring in the testers and the QAs and the DBAs. Get them all involved. If you can get everyone that's going to be touching the project, pushing in the same direction, working towards that same goal in a united way, you can't fail but to succeed. Well, unless the business changes direction halfway through the project and uh, I, I might be just rubbing old war wounds here, but uh, possibly some newer ones. But that does happen and don't see those as failures. You did the best that you could. But as long as everybody's pushing in the right direction and the business doesn't change what the goal is, then you should be good. 
not talking about the business changing what they want. Don't complain. Do not complain. Now, we're all guilty of this, me included, bitching about the problem or problems you're facing, how unsympathetic the business is to your plight, how stupid the idea is that the business is forcing upon you and it's never going to make any money. It's not your call. This only fuels fire in your team. And I don't mean fire to get things done, but little destructive fires, little uh, fire demons burning the place down from the inside out. So yes, it might bring some limp, wet, noodle-like sense of camaraderie, but you'll be seen as the negative one who has nothing but bad things to say about everything. I've been there. I've been in teams where there's been people that have always been labelled as the negative guy or girl, and when they do have a good idea, it takes them so much longer to get it across. So it's best to uh, to avoid falling into that. And the same rule goes for when you're talking about people's code as well. You don't know the pressures that the team was under uh, during the period that that code was cut. It might not be the person who wrote it that they're a terrible developer at all. So give them the benefit of the doubt. I say this because if you're sniping about terrible work that was done before, that person may still be in your team and all you're doing is winding them up and it's probably going to push your team apart it's not going to help you to achieve that goal of success that you're all working towards. So it's best just to take it at face value, change it where it's needed, and just get it done. Yes, there's awful code out there. Yes, it's written badly. Yes, it's not stable. Yes, it's not tested. But that's just the way it is. Deal with it. So that's a little bit negative. Um, but on a brighter note, celebrate good teamwork and great teamwork. Developers, on the whole, tend to be lone crusaders, out to change the world, one semicolon at a time. By the nature, we don't work well together. You know, we want to be on our own and and take everything on and, and that. This is where positive reinforcement comes in and celebrating the victories. When stuff gets done, congratulate team members. When they show you stuff that they've been working on, tell them that you're impressed with what they've done. Emphasize how what they've just achieved will make attaining the final goal so much easier, you know, easier than what you thought it was going to be when you first looked at it all. Everyone enjoys having their backs patted from time to time, and back patting is not a bad habit to get into. Your team members will feel needed and worthy And they'll want to meet the deadline and they'll want to do the work and they'll want to listen to you because they know that you appreciate what they're doing. It's uh, it's all part of bringing that team together in team cohesion. And being in a team is much more than just sitting at the same set of desks and working on the same code base or the same project. It's about communicating, sharing, socialising. It doesn't have to mean going down to the pub or spending weekends with the same people that you spend every day with. But maybe grab lunch together, talk about their side projects, their family, their hobbies, break down those barriers of professional silence. A team that can laugh and joke together, enjoy each other's company, is going to work better together than a silent, distant and uncooperative team ever will. We Bear that in mind. You know, I've worked in some terrible teams where there's been no communication. I worked in one team where I went on holiday, I came back, and it was two weeks before even anybody spoke to me. Maybe that says a little bit more about me than uh, than teamwork, but we're not going to get into that. It's not that sort of session. So team building can be interesting as well. It's a good route to go down to increase that team cohesion. But please don't do the same cliche corporate business crap. Nobody really enjoys that everybody wants to do, that every HR department loves Nobody really enjoys standing in a room with their sweaty work colleagues while they're blindfolded, maybe drifting down a river on some stupid raft or trying to make a circle in the in, in the side of square when they can't see with some bit of rope. Oh, it, it's tedious, it's annoying, it doesn't build teams. 
it's just a waste of time and money. Do something original. If your budget allows it, a day out somewhere, a tech event such as a conference, there's some free conferences out there, go to them. Maybe some sort of fancy dress evening event. Just something to help your team gel. If your company won't pay for it, pay for it yourselves because at the end of the day, it's your future at the company and it's only you lot that have to work together and work with each other on a daily basis. So if you can't do an event and you can't do a night out or an afternoon here or there or something, then a team meeting once a week, separate from your stand-ups that you do if, you, if you're working in that, that sort of way. You know, find a place to, uh, to have this meeting and get it done every week at the same time. Now, this is an example of something that I put into place with one team that I work with. And the whole team, I think, enjoyed it eventually. Now, I know some of the team listen to the show. So if you're listening, I hope you're still doing the team meetings. And I hope they're still as fun as, uh, as I made them. And I can see them all rolling their eyes and thinking, oh, God. So we'd have an hour-long meeting once a week at the same time, on the same day, regardless of what was going on. It didn't matter if I didn't have anything to talk about from the business. We'd simply have the meeting and talk about anything and everything that we wanted, be that we were talking about what we did at the weekend, what we would did maybe one evening or what we're doing next weekend, anything just to have that little bit of of team time. I try to encourage every week that at least one member of the team looked for something to bring to the meeting and discuss. It could be a framework or a website that they'd seen and they felt that we could use in our projects. Maybe a bit of the project or our code base that was a bit dodgy that needed looking at and they had some good ideas around it, but it wasn't on the main development roadmap. Or just a cool project that they'd read read about online somewhere and they wanted to, to tell us about it because they thought it was great. And it was a tough one to, uh, to put forward and even tougher to execute. I don't think I succeeded in getting everybody to give a talk while I was there, but the most stubborn member of the team caved eventually. And uh, in what I can only describe as a personal meltdown, um, and I think he's still having counselling for it now. And he got us to play a game called Werewolf. And the details of the game don't really matter. What does matter is the fact that he did something with the team. We all had a laugh and a giggle about it. And uh, it helped with the team bonding. Mainly because we ribbed him about it for a little while after. But everybody started to realise that we are all just normal people, that we want to get stuff done and... We're not all there just to, to shout and argue because we used to do quite a lot of that as well. Um, and I know that pushing other members of the team helped them develop confidence. Uh, one member of the team was very quiet and shy when I first came in to the business. Uh, he'd never expressed an opinion on anything until I started to pick on him in meetings, uh, asking for his opinion, getting him to talk, you know, pulling him out and saying, look, what do you think? What's your opinion on it? Would you do it this way? So after a short time of me nagging him on these meetings and on these topics and that, and trying to get him to bring something to a meeting to benefit the team, he did it. He sat in the meeting ready to tell the team what he had found that would benefit the team. He turned to me and said, I have two things that will benefit you and the team. These two things are... Firstly, shut up and listen to others in meetings. And secondly, listen to others and shut up in meetings. Now, this was all in good humour, by the way. But these words were from someone who a few months earlier wouldn't even voice an opinion in a meeting. And now he's standing up, being a bit loud, being a bit larry, having a, having a joke. Now, the whole team was in fits of laughter, and for once, I didn't have anything to say. I sat there, and I I just took my medicine that time. But it shows what can happen if you put that effort in, because you need to put in the effort to get teams working together and to have them enjoy working together as well. 
And as a small, famous green guy from a marsh on some faraway planet once said, do or do not, there is no try, and there is no try to get a team to work together. You either get the team to work together or you don't. It's that simple. And there are going to be times where the team just won't work together and there are things that need to be done at that at that stage, but I'm not going to cover that really too much today. Now, no man is an island. Now, as a developer, it's easy to think that you have to do it all, but don't be tempted into that world of, I need to do it all because everyone's garbage and I'm the best developer that's ever lived. It's very easy to fall into that trap. And once you're down there, it's a long way back up. There's a saying that goes, there is no I in team. This means that you are not the team. The team is only as strong as its weakest player. You need to bring everyone along for that journey. At the end of it, you'll be a better person for it, and more importantly, a better team for it. And keep these words in the forefront of your mind when you get the urge to run your God complex on the next project. You are not indispensable. You are not the only developer in the team. You are not the only developer who can write good code. And you're not the only developer that understands this project. You're a cog in the machine. How big and how important a cog you are is down to you and your attitude. Having a crappy attitude and working 100 times harder and longer than everyone in the team doesn't mean you are the best and most important. In fact, it probably means that your smallest cog spinning too fast for your job that you're doing. Uh, you need to slow down, size up what you need to do, and find a better way to do it. Find a better fit in your team for your skills. That might mean you just have to grow up a little bit and become a bigger cog. But it's worth standing back and thinking about it if you do feel that you are working a hundred times or a thousand times harder than anyone else in the team. If you have this issue with a team member and discussing it with them isn't helping. Maybe it's time for that person to find something else. A single bad developer can poison a whole team and the efforts that it's trying to uh, produce. Sometimes that person doesn't even know that they're doing it. So it's always best to nip it in the bud at the first signs where possible. Now it's probably not the cheeriest notes to uh, to end an episode on but hopefully it's given you food for thought and some ideas of where to go and, and what to do um so the points that we've covered in today's episode were define what success looks like for the team so work out what you want to get out of that goal out of that project work out how you're going to get there and decide who in the team is going to do what don't complain about projects and things that you've got to do Celebrate great teamwork, develop team cohesion, and understand that no man is an island. Now, if you have any feedback or you want to get on the podcast, then please do get in touch with me. Write something in the comments on the website. Contact me on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe because next week we're going to be talking to a returning guest, Jonathan Bullock. He's coming back to talk uh, about Ask Your Doctor this time. Uh, he was on talking about Jay Bake, uh, one of his open source projects previously. So thanks for listening to Cynical Developer. I'm James Studdart, and this was Working Better Together. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review on your favorite podcast platform and help the Cynical Developer to grow by increasing its audience. If you have any questions about this or any other episode, then drop us an email, a tweet, or leave a comment on the website where you can find all the resource links and show notes for each episode. 